Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be talking about pseudouridine and how it is incorporated in the body and how they use pseudouridine for the messenger RNA platform. Okay, <clears throat> let's start with what is uridine? Okay, now uridine structure, chemical structure, is this. And pseudouridine is a similar structure. It has the same five sided ring. But the six sided ring are slightly different. Okay. So where are the differences? Now we take, let's say this. So the differences you can see are your double bond here is no longer a double bond because it's incorporating a nitrogen. And you no longer have a nitrogen in this location, but you do in this location, okay? Now, <clears throat> now, Uracil is this structure here. Uracil is this structure. This is an H. Double bond. So you can see that this structure for uridine, right? 
fouls the uracil, right? So uridine is this whole uridine is this whole molecule. Okay, so really uridine is uracil with this five ring structure. Okay. Now you can see that the reason why this bond is taking place. Let's see. Why this bond is taking place is due to this reactivity of nitrogen and the hydrogen. The hydrogen drops off, and then you end up being able to connect through enzy enzymatic assembly. All right. So, why is this important? Okay. So, you have, you know, you have. Uracil is one of the nucleosides nucleotides and um, it's incorporated in the DNA so you know you have A, T, C, G right and then uracil can replace the T for RNA so RNA doesn't have the T, RNA is the U. So this is the U, okay? So, and it needs that backbone, this five ring backbone. All right, so with that said, pseudouridine has this kind of like modified structure, okay? So it's different than, um, than uh, this is an H. You can kind of see that this is kind of like a rotated, rotated structure, all right, for uridine, all right? For example, this one here is here, right? This one here is here. This one here, three, is here. Right, and then this flips this here. Four is this one, and then five is here. Okay, so there's a rotation. There's like there's a flip that's happening. Okay, all right. So now that's the differences between uridine which is uracil with the, with the five-sided attachment and pseudouridine, which is the rotation. It's really, it's really rotated, okay? And you lose the double bond because of this attachment to, to the, the ring, the five-sided five ring. Okay, now let's talk about what, why is that important? Okay, so let's do a new screen here. And we're going to talk about different types of, of pseudouridine, okay? Pseudouridine can be incorporated into different RNA, okay? And there is different types of R, or different types of RNA. Here it is. There's tRNA, there are mRNA, ribosomal RNA, there's SN RNA, and 
Okay. So why, why is this pseudo uridine in, incorporated? Well, like I said before, when you look at the structure, this right here, it is, um, it's actually more stable than the uridine structure, okay? Okay, now, and what I mean by more stable, it adds structural integrity. Okay, so with the tRNA, tRNAs are for holding the amino acid and um, trans and transferring it to the ribosome for incorporation to make that polypeptide. The messenger RNA is the code. This is the code for making the protein or the peptide. And proteins are made from the amino acids. The ribosomal RNA is the machinery that's reading the messenger RNA and also binding with the tRNA and some other factors to transfer this to, to make to make the, the protein. Okay. So the RNA plus the T RNA really making the protein. There's a little bit more complexity because of some transcriptional factors and, and what, but that's detail we don't need to go into. Okay, the the S in the, the SNRA. All right. Um, this is small nuclear RNA. Now there's also micro RNA. I don't know if people have heard of this micro RNA. Basically, what's what's happening here is, is that you have small pieces of, of RNA, and these small pieces have like structure, right? And they might do something. They, they're attaching to the the opposite for some reason, and you might have a, a longer structure, right? This is your micro. SNRA and it can attach and stop some function or actually change the function of this RNA, this larger RNA, this larger messenger RNA. So there's there there are inhibitory factors and and th these kind of act like as a modulator in a way. Okay. But it also can be used to break down, splice. There's a whole bunch of things that these things are starting to be found to be doing. Okay. All right, so that's, you know, what these, these things are. All right, now let's talk about what is going on with pseudouridine. Now, the, the, now, let me make a caveat here. This pseudo, there are different types of pseudouridine, okay? And I'll go into the one that is being used on the messenger RNA. Um, I should add that 
to this slide so you understand. Now, the, the difference between the Caraco and Wiseman pseudouridine is what is called which which is what is called N1 meth methyl pseudo pseudouridine okay now what the difference is, is this section here clean this up a little bit is this area right here right here okay on pseudouridine which is endogenous will have a nitrogen group and a hydrogen attached to the nitrogen but what has been found is is that you can take that hydrogen out Right, and you can actually attach a methyl group to it. And what will happen is now you have a methyl pseudouridine. Okay, so that's. This is what's in the messenger RNA platform. All right, is the this difference? Okay, but the regular pseudouridine at this position, at position, at this position is actually the regular pseudouridine that's endogenous is actually a nitrogen and a hydrogen, okay? Okay, so with that background, now let's go to endogenous pseudouridine. Okay, now, <laughs> We have we have a structure that is something similar to this. Okay. All right, there are these hairpin loops. And you have you have um, the ACC sequence. And this ACC sequence holds an amino acid, some sort of amino acid. And this is where the codons are. Okay. And this is reading the actual messenger RNA. Okay. You know, and obviously you have machinery that's holding the ribosome. Okay. Now, there are areas. Now, this is a R. This is a transfer RNA. And it will have A, G, C, U. No T. Now, in certain areas, 
it helps to have the structure more stable when it has also a modified pseudouridine. Okay, or this, you know, this this pseudouridine. We're talking about endogenous. So this U can either be a regular U or you know, or you know, uridine or pseudouridine. Now the way it is um, represented is with this symbol here. Okay. But this is pseudouridine. So there are, are some key areas for this structure, for this structure here to be more stable by using the pseudouridine. And those areas can be um, right about here. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go back. Um, right about here. Right about here. All right, so this will give it just enough structure so it doesn't break apart as well. So, you know, you have the anti codon, you know, and you have the codon. Okay, so because these structures are here, this is leading to a better, this is leading to a better interaction with the RNA interaction with the R RNA, which is the ribosomal RNA, and the messenger RNA. Okay, so this is helping with this for it to be more structurally stable and have the interaction with the ribosomal RNA and the messenger RNA. Okay, now let's talk about the messenger RNA. Now, pseudouridine can be found in messenger RNA. And it seems to be that it's affecting the stop codons. So we have like we have three different stop codons. We have the UAA, the U, the UGA, and the UAG. Okay, these are stop codons. Now, stop codons basically is that when you see the sequence, then the ribosome will basically fall off and stop making the polypeptide. So this this stops the the production of the protein. This stops it.
So what this does, the pseudouridine with that change in structure, remember, you have the you have this fibering. I'm not going to draw it completely. So you have the fibering plus the the six ring. This is the pseudo uridine. Okay. So this this structure for the stop codons. For either U or for the pseudo uridine. And for actually U to see, they are promoting nonsense suppression. So nonsense suppression basically means So there's different types of kind of like mutations, right? <coughs> and some mutations can be found uh, or seen and some are like hidden, right? All right, so what this will do is per, so, so you can have a mutation within, let's say, let's say you had in your messenger RNA code, you had in your messenger RNA code a U, G, G, A, T, and then a stop codon, U, A, A, okay? So the stop codon is, is downstream. But let's say you had a mutation at this point here, and this UJA, you know, this this has a bunch of stuff too, right? Okay, let's see this position here actually mutated, and it turned into an into an A. Well, you would have UJA or U, UGA, right? UGA would be a stop codon. It would stop here, stop. Right? And wouldn't reach to the downstream. Okay, so that's that's a mutation that that's a nonsense. Okay, it stops prematurely. Okay. Well this pseudouridine is preventing um, mutations in that area. So for example, in our example here, let's say, let's say this pseudouridine, this uridine turned into a pseudouridine, okay? The, the, the probability of this going into nonsense now has gone down. And this is part of the reason why, this is one, I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more with the vaccine, with the messenger RNA platform. But this is part of the reason why they were using the pseudouridine. 
this N1 methyl. Pseudo you were doing. That's part of the reason. Another reason is, is that it actually slows down. It's this methyl pseudouridine that they used. It slows down actually the the production of the, the peptide and the, uh, preventing the slippage of the of the ribosome. Okay, now let's talk about ribosomal. Okay, now there are different, there, there are two main features. There's a bottom feature and a top feature of the ribosome. All right, and different subunits. And different organisms have different, different numbers, right? There's a eukaryotic one and there's a prokaryotic one. Um, and there's sub, there are subunits to this, okay? Um, Now, and this reads the messenger RNA, and then it incorporates the T RNA that we just talked about. And when it has that loop in there, remember that loop that I, I drew, that, and it has that am amino acid on the top, it has features, it has kind of like three cavities, a load category, um, uh, like a transfer ca transfer cavity, and then an exit cavity. And this area had, um, you know, a tRNA leaving. Okay, it's exiting. There's a tRNA here that's getting this, and this peptide is growing over time as it's reading through the, the messenger RNA, all right? And eventually, so it, it, like, it goes from one, two, three, right? Loads in, transfers the, the, the amino acid, grows the amino acid, and then, the amino acid growing chain is transferred and then the the empty tRNA is exited out, okay? This is part of the reason why the transfer RNA needs that pseudouridine because of this kind of, this, um, this interaction that's going on between the messenger RNA and the ribosome. Um, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of torquing that's going on during this, this feeding into the different cavities and the transfer of that peptide, that, that amino acid to build up that peptide. Okay, now. Now, right, that's what the basic structure is. Okay, now what's going on with the, the RNA? for pseudouridine specifically. So it's found, so you have the larger part of the, the, the RNA and the smaller part of the rRNA, the, the ribosomal rRNA. So we'll call this small, call this large. And it's found in both. So the pseudouridine is found in both of them.
Okay, so what's happening here is, is that the pseudouridine is providing structure. Right, you got to remember this. I, there's no way I can draw this, but this it's this long that this large and this small assembly assemble onto the messenger RNA. But th this structure is actually a, it is a, a RNA structure, you know, and it's, it's, it's complex. It's, it's, there's no way that I can perfectly draw it, but it's, it kind of folds on itself. Okay. And then this one will do something similar. Okay. But in some key regions, there are clusters of pseudouridine. And those clusters are in domain two, four, and five. And what they do is they're stabilizing the interaction of the, the smaller and the larger to interact with this. And also, remember those cavities that I had, that I drew in here, over, over here, right? These cavities, right? That interaction to maintain the building of that protein that's coming out is also helped by the pseudouridine cluster that's in the, the RNA, the, the rRNA. And then the way this is, so it's not just the clustering. It's not just the clustering of the pseudouridine in some regions. But it's also you know, these clusters are to help for the, the attachment to the messenger RNA and to kind of hold the, the RNA, the transfer RNA in place and to allow for this peptide to grow. But it's also used to allow for this to properly fold. So, and again, I, there's no way I can draw it, but, but you know, there's, for, for the, the RNA, the R RNA, the ribosomal RNA, the pseudouridine does two things. It's helping with the D, the RNA RNA interaction, and that RNA RNA interaction is the the messenger RNA to the ribosomal RNA, and it's also the ribosomal RNA to the the transfer RNA. Then there's also an RNA. protein interaction and that's this this building of this peptide but in addition so those, that that helps with the interaction but in addition it helps with the folding of the ribosomal rna to its proper form so pseudouridine helps with folding helps with folding these complex structures, okay? Now, again, this is the endogenous form. This is not the methylated form. Okay, so, all right, now what we wanna do is discuss Now I'm doing this on the fly, so I'm just, you know, I didn't prepare this at all, so I, pardon me if it seems discombobulated. 
All right, S N R N A. Okay. So they can also have the pseudo uridine. Okay, now we have Okay, we have a messenger RNA. Right? And we have we have Exons and introns. Exons, introns. Exons, introns. Okay. And this can be folded, spliced in in a, in a way where we only you, the we only have exons. So exon one, intron one. Exon two, intron two. We want an exon one plus exon two. So that means that we're kind of splicing. We're splicing this. We're splicing this off. So we only have this and this. Okay. So the the SNRNAs help with this splicing. Now where the pseudouridine comes in. Is that Not really sure what the structure of this small nuclear RNA is, what it actually looks like. Okay, I think it looks something like this. Okay, it has it has kind of like this feature. Okay, because it's not just. Remember, you know, you can have RNA that's kind of like that. You can have hairpin type RNA, right? You know. And then it's opened up, you know, and helps to fold certain of these structures kind of together, right? That's one kind of RNA. Right? All right. But we normally just write it like this, right? Um, but this thing can kind of fold on itself, right? There can be hairpins and stuff. Well, this small nuclear RNA looks something like this. So it's, a, it's a, it gets a little involved, the way it looks. And it's like folding on itself. has this kind of feature. Now the circles are areas where they're not bounded together. This with a complement. These have a complementary sequence. And this structure interacts to help with the splicing to get the proper protein. Proper protein. Okay. Now, if you had intron or exon, let's say exon three, right? 
you can have a splicing where you're making E1 plus E3. So this is an E1 plus E2. And this protein, different type of protein, maybe E1 plus E2, E3. So this, this helps with this splicing function, okay? Well, pseudouridine in certain areas are gonna add to stability, similar to the other features that's going on with the RNA, the messenger RNA, and blah, blah, blah. So in certain areas, um, you're going to have this RNA, RNA interaction, and you're also, it'll help with that, and then it'll also help with the RNA protein, protein interaction, okay? So, Now, where, they, where specifically they are, I don't know. I mean, I'm not really sure where the binding of the, the I would have to study the S and RNA at the molecular level to understand, you know, where, where are the structural components? Um, because I'm not sure where, you know, where in this, the, you know, the main docking areas are. I'd have to study that, I'm not really sure. And then again, the folding, it helps with folding. The pseudouridine is helping with the folding of the SNRNA. So again, pseudouridine interaction of the, the RNA, the RNA interaction to RNA and protein and holding of the small nuclear RNA. Okay. Okay, so now in this video, I went through the structure of uridine, uracil, and how the pseudouridine has an, an NH at this area, but the, that that hydrogen leaves, and then there's a methyl group that's added for the um, the methyl pseudouridine that's used in the messenger RNA platform. Then I went and explained to you the differences between the tRNA, the messenger RNA, the ribosomal RNA, and the small nuclear RNA, and did a little bit on the on the microRNA, and um, basically what those functions were. Then, um, I discussed the tRNA and where the interactions are for the pseudouridine to allow for better interaction with the ribosomal RNA and the messenger RNA. Then, I went and described in how pseudouridine can be used to prevent the probability of a nonsense mutation. It's preventing the production of a stop codon. Okay, and this is part of the reason why the methyl pseudouridine that's used in the messenger RNA platform uh, was used, but it's also to help to slow the production down. But it's not, those aren't the only two reasons. Uh, the methyl group, and I'll say this in a different video also, this methyl group here actually um, flies underneath the radar and prevents the 
the immune system from detecting it as a foreign product. Okay, now, then I went into the ribosome RNA and how the pseudouridine endogenous helps with the RNA RNA interaction and the RNA protein interaction and how it helps with the folding. You know, a key piece here is this, how this how the, the the small ribosome RNA and the large ribosome RNA are 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 helped structurally for, for folding with the pseudouridine. Now here, the small nuclear RNA, uh, you know, helps with the, the splicing, right? Now, it also has, you know, RNA, RNA interaction, stabilizes the RNA, RNA interaction, the RNA protein interaction, and also the, the folding of the the small nuclear RNA. Now, exactly where? I'm not sure. You know, is it here? Is it here? You know, is it here? I, I don't know. I don't know how this is docking to, to, you know, how the small RNA is, is docking to it. I, I'd have to study that a little bit more exactly what the binding domain is, but I don't really care actually. But all right. And then, um, Okay, and then in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'll, I will go in a little bit more detail on the endogenous, on the endogenous and the methyl RNA. Um, the methyl, the, the methyl pseudouridine on the messenger RNA platform. So hopefully, so this is going to be probably a two video series, maybe three video series, depending on how long it's going to take me to do this, this second video. But at least this is a good primer to understand the purpose of pseudouridine endogenously. You know, again, endogenous pseudouridine doesn't have the methyl group. It has nitrogen attached to this nitrogen. That's the endogenous, but the methyl pseudouridine, which is used in the messenger RNA play platform, does have that methyl group attachment to the nitrogen. Okay, so uh, thank you for you know watching this video. Hopefully, this teaches you a little bit of the biochemistry of it and how it interacts with you know key machinery within the cell, such as the T, the tRNA, the ribosome RNA, the small nuclear RNA, even in the, the messenger RNA, and um, is a good primer as we dive a little bit deeper into the synthesis of this actual protein. Now, if, and I'll, I'll also bring up the, the cancer stuff too. I mean, there's there's some interesting things that are going on with pseudouridine incorporation to stabilize proteins. Because in cancer, you have a lot of fusion proteins, and you have a you have actually a chromosome that's breaking down. The chromosomal integrity isn't there. This is the reason why it goes into cancer, right? But if it if it knocks out some pathways, then what will happen is, is that what's interesting with some cancers is that it actually has an upregulation of this pseudouridine endogenous and stabilizes these structures. Even though you have a breaking down of the genome and more fusion proteins, you're actually stabilizing some of the, these interactions that I just discussed. So, um, and that may be part of the reason why, from an evolutionary point of view, cancer is, you know, it is, um, you know, can survive in, in the body and, 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 and break away from the natural immune system from, from, you know, clearing it out. It's not just, it's not just having, it's apoptosis pathways being knocked out but 
it, there is this interaction of, of pseudo uridine um, stabilizing the molecule. All right, so that's just a little bit of a, I'll, I'll go in a little bit more detail in my thoughts on that. So hopefully you, you've learned something from this. I uh, apologize for my drawings. I don't draw very well, <laughs> but um, um, these sketches, especially while I'm talking, but please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and uh, purchase the products that I offer. I mean, I have a lot of different, a lot of really, you know, really good health products. Um, for example, Let's see if I can share my screen here. Sometimes on the iPad, this is part of the reason why I don't like doing the whiteboard so much, is, is that you know, sharing on the iPad isn't as streamlined as sharing on the laptop. And, you know, as I get older, I just want a simplified life. I'm tired of this, I'm tired of technology, really. Okay, so here um, is my website and you can go to the store by just clicking store and then I have you know many different products. I have the nano silvers, the C60, the boomer products, the all natural deodorants and stuff. But you know, please go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and purchase the toothpaste that I have. It's no, there's no fluoride in it. This is a very, very high quality toothpaste. It's going to be the best toothpaste that you ever tried. Uh, you know, it'll neutralize pathogens. It'll, because it's neutralizing pathogens, it's going to be removing the, re preventing, you know, additional plaque because plaque is the buildup of, uh, you know, because of the pathogens that are in your mouth. Um, and by reducing that, that gum inflammation and reducing the plaque, you're reducing the chances of the cardiovascular disease. In addition, I have um, liquids. I take Max 35 every day with a, tea, with a teaspoon. And if I'm not feeling well, I'll take a tablespoon of that or two, two tablespoons. But um, that's a great product to neutralize pathogens. Basically, what you do is you swish it in your mouth and you gargle with it and you can just swallow it. And this is keeping that mucosal um, lining um, within your you know, upper cavity uh in, in in proper health to prevent you know some sort of barrier disruption S silver gel that's a, a great product what i do is i put that on my hands and around my face and nose and ears to neutralize pathogens i have the nano soaps i have the lozenges i have right now in stock the sweet menthol lozenge uh probiotic this is in the in the capsule form I also have a powdered form by Boomer. I have a great multivitamin that you should try. So, you know, some very good, high quality structural nano silver products. The C60 is a, is a uh, great, very strong antioxidant. All right, it's in, it's in uh, coconut or avocado oil but this compound just soaks up those reactive oxygen species. And when you do that, you're reducing the cellular stress on, you know, you're reducing the cellular stress because it's soaking up those charged oxygens. 
when you're doing that, this is going to increase the mitochondrial health of the cell and you will have more energy because the cell is producing the ATP. So what's really important is just strong antioxidants will help with your body getting into homeostasis because that chronic inflammation and all that, that it puts a lot of stress on the cell. So I have it in two ounce, four ounce and eight ounce again in coconut oil or avocado oil for the boomer products. I have D three that is very good in being able to uh, pop toe cells. It's, it's also a, a cofactor for gene expression. So it's a very important, um, supplement on top of that it helps with the absorption of calcium vitamin c um you know obviously you don't want to get scurvy right <laughs> and then um omega-3 great for cardiovascular health ashwagandha great way to control blood glucose levels good night formula which is uh tryptophan and melatonin a great way to maintain that that REM sleep that you need to, to solidify memory and to just get your body, your body actually is healing when you're sleeping. But if you're not sleeping properly, your body's not healing properly. The probiotic that I have here is the powdered form. It's a great way to just put it in a smoothie or, you know, for me, I put the, the powder in my hummus. Resveratrol, a great antioxidant is synergistic with C60. Uh, the the B complex, that's these B comp, your B vitamins are cofactors for processes for metabolism. In addition, if you don't have enough of these cofactors, you're not going to have proper electron transport chain function within your mitochondria. Um, and, you know, being low on your B complex can be associated with anemias. Turmeric is a great, you know, not only an antioxidant, but it's, 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 it brings down that in, in that inflammation. Remember what I've been saying? I've been saying control your reactive oxygen species by, by neutralizing them, you know, with the C60s, with the turmerics, with the, the resveratrols. But turmeric is also brings down that inflammatory response. When you bring down that inflammatory response, that's another way to reduce the reactive oxygen species because there's less chance of creating them because there's less inflammation. Zinc and magnesium are important cofactors. Lignans, great for hormonal balance and support. Collagen is great for the, the for the skin and to help with the the cartilage, um, especially if you've been like a a runner for a long time and you're starting to feel that osteoarthritis. You know, one you know, stop running so much. Start walking is probably some of the best things. Swimming is a really really um, good exercise. But you know, just just kind of let those that cartilage and those tendons and those ligaments start to heal. It takes a, a while, you know, if you've been injured, but collagen is one of those components that are needed to kind of help rebuild those, those joints. But uh, this product is a great product. And if you mix it with, if you take it with, with the vitamin C and drink 64 ounces of water, you're going to see an improvement of your skin. Uh, and then if you take it with the C60, which is the strong antioxidant and the resveratrol, which helps with getting rid of apoptose cells, you'll, you'll see an added benefit in your dermal layer. The, the, the digestive enzyme complex, as we get older, or if you are really into, you know, training for something like a marathon or whatever, uh, you need to be able to break down those carbohydrates, those proteins and those lipids and reduce that load on your pancreas. So this can be a supplement for individuals that are in the gym all the time working out and you know need a recovery and need you know to be able to fuel quickly. But um, it's also really good for individuals that are getting older and they don't wanna um, 
you don't want to put so much load on their pancreas. As we get older, our pancreas does start to wear out. So this helps with that to be able to break down those lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates that we eat. The Clarity Factor is a great product that helps to get rid of that brain fog and uh, allows for you to be able to concentrate. I take this twice a day. I take it in the morning and I take it in mid-afternoon. So um, you take it, you know, that first week and you're going to see, you're going to see a major difference in your ability to concentrate and to be able to, to solidify memory. And uh, when you, you know, when you are clear and you're not, you know, in this fog, you're going to just have a better day. And on top of that, you're going to have better sleep. And I have these all natural deodorants that Rainbow Herbals makes. The even better bar is for muscle pain, for cuts, scrapes, bruises, burns, minor burns. What will happen is, is you'll heal faster. What's amazing about this product also is that even if you don't have anything wrong with your skin, if you start to apply this on your skin on a, on a regular basis, you'll actually start to see a, a health benefit of the skin and it'll be smoother and healthier. So you can use this as, uh, as a skincare, you know, health skincare product to improve your skin or um, as more of a muscle ache. You'd be amazed that, you know, you get a muscle ache, you put this thing on and it actually goes away. The, the, now these ingredients are are you know high quality Himalayan essential oil that that's been put into a bar form. Um, so uh, easy application, uh, very very high quality. And in addition, I have the citrus deodorant and the peppermint lavender tea tree deodorant. So uh, try those out. You know, all natural. You know. Very high quality. Again, essential oils from the Himalayas put into a a, a bar form, and uh, you know this. You'll notice uh, you know added benefits because you know it doesn't have the aluminum in it, and it doesn't have you know all these um, you know funky chemicals that you would get from let's say a Procter and Gamble product. Now, lastly for the store, you know, I have these different anti-aging boxes that I curated um, and, you know, at different price points. And, and basically what it is, is it's, it's like a kit. So, you know, if you, you know, want to get, let's say a max 35 and a C60 and, you know, D3 and vitamin C and toothpaste and the deodorant and the probiotic, then the advanced box would be a good pick for you. You can also buy these products individually, but um, if you wanted to start a beginner's box for, let's say, skincare, great way to do it is get the collagen, the vitamin C, and the gel, the silver gel, and that will help. The key here is also to drink the 64 ounces of water. You know, if you want to get an anti-Fauci box, you know, that would have the Max 35, the vitamin D3, the, the magnesium and zinc, the turmeric and ashwagandha. So, you know, I got all these different curated boxes for you for just a one click to get, you know, the products that you need. Especially if you're a beginner or you can you, you, or you can just buy the products individually, you know, go to the store and buy the products individually. But uh, hopefully this will, you know, help with with your health. Um, now, um, in the home page here, at the very bottom, you can donate through Stripe or PayPal to help support my news coverage. You can also donate on Buy Me a Coffee. All the links are in the description of this video and all my videos. So please uh, help by donating or going to the store and buying the products that I offer. Very, very high quality products that you get. Um, and you will notice in a very short order uh, the the health benefits of following this protocol, this anti aging protocol that I've been been saying for a long time now, for years actually, and something that I've been doing since I was 16 years old, you know, and improving on it as different supplements came to the market. Now, um, please also subscribe to my channels. I have three YouTube channels. 
So please subscribe. The links are in the description of this video and all my videos. And also subscribe to my Patreon, Brighton, and Brumble channels so you can see the content. A lot of the things that I bring up, I cannot, I cannot keep up on YouTube because it's talking about, you know, sensitive issues. Um, but if you, you know, listen uh, to my premieres and, you know, go and watch the videos that are stored on Brighty on BitChute and Rumble, you'll be able to, you know, see that content that's been heavily censored on YouTube. So it's very important that you subscribe to all six channels. And uh, if you could, please subscribe to my Patreon channel for a nominal fee that you, you know, you can help support my news coverage. Thank you for supporting my work. Thank you for, for um, being a, um, a, a loyal follower and, and listener and, and, um, you know, hopefully you're learning something as I do these videos. It, it takes, you know, some effort to, to do these things and some time. So, you know, hopefully you appreciate, you know, the effort that I put into it. But um, I do I do appreciate your support and the, the individuals that are going to the store and listening to what I'm saying about this anti-aging protocol and how to improve your health and boost up your immune system. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.